Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. It's going to be a rough journey ahead of us in this video. I'm actually recording this at the end of the video, replacing my original intro or modifying it. Yes, we are looking at the 492 again, Pen BBS's magnetic filling fountain pen. And it's in pieces because this video is kind of in two parts. The first part I talk about magnetism because I have a compass so we can look at north and south poles and how they relate to the different magnetic features of the pen. And then in the second part of the video, I make my attempt at re-engineering this pen to hopefully improve the filling system. Unfortunately, the results were not as I expected. So, no further ado, let's get back to the video at hand. And just a little word of, of caution, please do not attempt to do what I do. It's not something I recommend anybody to do. I have this compulsion to take things apart and to look at them and analyze them and think about how I might have done something differently. Most of the time, whatever I have is probably done as well as it can be done. So let's get back to the video for today. So today we have a compass and you may ask why do you have a compass and some of you may already guess because of the Pen BBS 492 magnetic filler fountain pen. And when I did the first review I couldn't find my compass and I still can't find my compass which probably has been like 20 years since I actually used it. I bought one from Amazon and this is very similar to the one I used to have. So this is the needle that points north. And uh, the first compass is somebody took a very thin piece of steel and rubbed it along its length and put it in water or oil that it floated in and the needle would point north because the rubbing had aligned the atoms and created a magnetic field on that needle. And this is the modern version of that experiment that was done. So the 492 is a few feet away. So as we bring it in near the compass, we'll see immediately that needle that was facing north is now facing towards the top of the cap of the 492. And as we take the 492 away, it swings back. What this means is, is that the magnet in the top of the cap and the north pole of the magnet is facing in that direction towards the compass because the end of that needle is a south pole. And for those that study magnetism, those that opposite poles attract and the same poles repel. So also in this pen is a circular magnet that runs the piston. And as we bring it down, you'll notice that the needle fo pokes in the opposite direction. And as we just turn the barrel, we'll see it switch. So uh, the circular magnet has a different version of polarity to it. And it is quite dramatic, as you can see. So when you use the cap, and we'll just put the barrel down, hopefully in a way that it doesn't roll away. And as the cap approaches the barrel, the barrel will move. And now that south pole is facing in that direction, attracted to the north pole, of the magnet inside the top of the cap and the North Pole is pointing in that direction. I'll try to do some illustrations of it in this direction and in this direction to illustrate how I feel this indicates how that magnetic field is oriented on these two very strong magnets and it does take a little bit of effort to separate them. So that was just a little experiment into the world of magnetism. Hopefully it'll help some of you maybe understand how the 492 magnets work. 
And if they're made out of what I expect is a very strong permanent magnet, it'll last for many, many years. I've heard that after 10 years, they maybe only lost 1% of their magnetism. So no concerns over the magnet eventually not working. Is there a magnet at the other end of the barrel? And yes, there is. And you can see how it attracts the needle in the compass. Now what is interesting is when the barrel and cap do have some magnetic attraction, even though in theory, oh, there we go. So that is the South Pole painting paint pointing in, in that direction. When we bring the cap in, we'll see that that's the North Pole. So that's why they do attract, because again, it's opposite poles. The magnetic plug here is certainly nowhere near the strength of what's in the piston and the top of the cap. And as you can see, even turning that does not turn the piston. And I may take this apart just to see if I can get those two put together. And I haven't used this pen for about a week or two since I did the review. And as you can see, that piston is certainly reluctant to move. And my uh, turning it is not really doing anything. So that piston will get stuck. Well, let's experiment a little bit and see what I can do. So one of my theories on the Pen BBS piston sticking, like the 309 and, and this 492, is that silicone, whatever that O-ring is made out of, that forms the seal with the barrel somehow just gets stuck with the barrel. And as you saw, turning it or whatever I tried to do, I couldn't get that piston to move. So my theory is, is I uh, took the section out, and if you just get that piston moving the slightest bit, and now we'll bring back in the cap, and we'll see now it moves fine. So that's my theory. As you can see, that 2020 stays in one spot even though I turned the barrel because that lantern on that side is the south pole. You can see that magnet turn. It's hard to keep them apart. These are really strong magnets. You can see as I turn the barrel, that always stays at the same orientation. You can see it move there. So that's the theory, just get the piston moving. So I'm always going to keep this piston halfway. So uh, if I do decide to fill this pen up and, and write with it, and that piston may be stuck after it's been sitting for uh, days or weeks or longer, I can just get it started with something to push it with. Could use a Q-tip, I use this uh, cuticle stick. I put the glue here and it's dried for two days. Now I got it kind of distracted yesterday. And the glue's a little bit visible here, but once this goes into the barrel, you're not gonna see it. And now that <clears throat> piston with its O-ring is directly attached to the magnet. So when I put it inside the barrel, when we turn the magnet with that magnet in the cap, it's gonna turn the piston and free it up. That's my theory. I put the piston back into the barrel. I removed the, obviously I had to remove the bottom section. And I also removed that uh, little rat emblem with the unique ID number from the top of the barrel. And the reason why I did that is I was not successful in what I did to glue that magnet to the piston. I don't know whether it's showing up, but you can see it's at a slight angle there. Very, very slight, but it means something. So this is to illustrate that there's a little bit of effort to get the piston moving, but once it moves, it moves smoothly. Up and down. There's a little bit of a catch right here in the middle. I'm not really certain 
what's causing that, but it certainly does impact. Yeah, right there. It's, it certainly does impact the movement of the piston. So I wanted to also use this to illustrate a little bit of a pressure. If I plug the top with my finger here, and we push that piston up, you get a lot of resistance as you go up. And as you can see, air pressure pushes it back easily. So when you're drawing the piston up, you have to let air out of the top. So let's bring the magnet into play. As you can see, it connects very nicely. And as we try to move it, it seems to move fairly nicely, which is what we would expect. But when I first put this magnet in here, it got stuck right in the middle, and I couldn't move it. And I took a lot of effort to get that little metal finial at this bottom of the barrel which is screwed into play which I took out easily when I first got the pen but apparently I put it back in with a little bit more torque next time I put it in it's going to be looser and I'm not going to use silicone because you do need to have a little bit of an airflow so what I'm illustrating here now is there the the piston is moving a little bit but that middle section is still an issue and I don't know why. So at the end of the day, gluing the magnet to the piston did not fix the sticking issue. It just seems to even make it stick even more. And again, if you go in and move that piston off of that area, and, and I, don't, I don't know whether it's showing up, but you can see there's a little bit of an angle there because when the magnet grabs the piston, it pulls it towards the magnet and that skews, I'll ex accent it a little bit more drastically, it skews the piston instead of being straight, it's now at an angle, which in theory shouldn't make it harder to move, but it is. Put it down to the bottom. There it's moving very easily, which is what I'd hope to happen. And towards that middle part, it gets a little bit stuck. And there we made it past it. We'll try going the other way. It certainly does not make this substantially better than it was before. So I'm very disappointed that my engineering fix did not fix and probably accentuated the issues with this pen felt it was worth a third look at the pen bbs 492 magnetic filling fountain pen and hopefully i've shed some light on how magnetism works and how it works with this filling system here's some diagrams to show about magnetic poles obviously the earth is the first one and we're all familiar with the north pole I've read some books in my sci-fi thing where the North and South Pole flips and that creates some interesting challenges. But this is not a uh, review of a sci-fi book. May you enjoy all of your pens regardless of how they fill. And hopefully you can fill them. And the, obviously the simplest is a dip pen. And I would say that this magnetic filling system gets on that higher end of let's see how complex we can make a filling system and how neat and unique we can make it and cool we can make it and they've succeeded with this model so enjoy your pens enjoy your inks put some thoughts on paper share your experiences as hopefully uh, many of you may be <clears throat> in relaxed quarantine so you're you're getting out hopefully feeling comfortable about going out, which is an important thing. If you're not comfortable, don't do it. That's been my theory about most everything, especially concerning health matters. But this is a video about fountain pens, so let's stay with fountain pens. And let's enjoy our fountain pens, enjoy our inks, enjoy our papers, write some letters. I'm certainly trying to um, increase my letter writing and, and write to some people I haven't written to for a while. And it's been fun, and I enjoy it. So give it a try. It's the end of this video, so thank you for watching. May you enjoy your life. Stay safe, healthy, and happy.
We're going to say bye until the next video.